Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Webmin, which is a web-based interface for Linux system administration, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this is actually very straightforward to do. Uh, the instructions are actually pretty clear on the Webmin site. Uh, so let's go to the Webmin site, take a look and see what we've got. Uh, if you look at the home page you can read a little bit about Webmin and what it does. If we go to the downloads page, and we look over here for Webmin installation. We're going to look at installing on Debian. Uh, remember that the uh, Raspberry Pi, if you installed the um, Debian uh, Raspbian uh, Wheezy operating system, which is the operating system most of you will install, uh, is a Debian system. Uh, and so you can use those instructions. Uh, when you look at this page, um, there are a few different instructions for installing on Debian. I'm going to suggest that the easiest one is down here, this, uh, what's currently the second one, uh, using the Webmin apt repository. These instructions are very clear. All you have to do is follow these instructions. It will install uh, Webmin, uh, get it all working for you. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Uh, let's go over here to our Raspberry Pi. Now I'm logged in uh, in a terminal session using SSH. This is on Windows uh, using PuTTY, uh, which is a, a SSH terminal uh, program. Uh, of course, if you have your Raspberry Pi up and running and it's connected to a monitor and keyboard, uh, you can work directly on the Pi itself. But I have this running headless on my network, um, uh, so there is no uh, keyboard uh, or monitor attached to it, and therefore uh, I'm logged into the command line using this terminal program program. Uh, and all we need to do is follow these instructions uh, here that uh, are provided by uh, Webmin and we'll get this up and running. So the first thing to do, uh, it asks you to edit um, your sources.list file. And the sources.list uh, file um, is the file that uh, uh, contains the um, URLs of all the different libraries where you can get software. Uh, and uh, Webmin maintains its own library uh, that will automatically download uh, and install software, so we need to add those uh, lines to the repository. So we're going to go, so we're going to go sudo nano, nano is a text editor, uh, and then we're going to put in the uh, name of the sources.list file at slash etc slash apt slash sources.list. Uh, and that's going to get us into a text editor where we can, um, uh, where we can take a look at these things. Uh, this is, uh, unfortunately, uh, as, as the Raspbian Pi ships, uh, comes across as one, one long line. And so we can look at this line, uh, uh, which are the existing repositories, um, and pretty much leave those alone. Uh, we want to get to the bottom of it so we can add another line. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just type these in. I'm going to point out that, that what you need to type in is over here. Uh, no reason for you to watch me type, so I'll pause the recording while I get them typed in and then talk about them. All right, I've got these typed in. Uh, after you type them in, I want you to look at them very carefully um, and compare them uh, to what is over um, in the Webmin instructions. Uh, it's easy to make a typo in here, and of course if you make a typo it's not going to work for you. Uh, in particular, note the space in both cases between the URL and the word Sarge. There's a space there, and there's also a space between the word Sarge and Contrib. Uh, in both places, space between the word Sarge and Contrib. Uh, when you've got that all entered, uh, you can hit Control X, and then answer yes to save the file. And that'll save the file and the changes for you. Now, the next set of instructions has you install a key. Uh, those instructions are not entirely clear, um, so I'm going to show you how to make those work on the Raspberry Pi. It varies a little bit depending on what computer system you're on. Uh, but there are three commands given there. You need to change to the root directory, you need to get a key, and then you need to install it. Uh, and it, it, it um, uh, works a little bit differently on the Pi than what it shows there. Uh, the first thing to do is to change to the root directory, so we're going to go cd and then just a slash uh, instead of the uh, cd slash root that they show in the instructions. Uh, that will get us to that directory. Uh, now when we, need, when we go to get the key, we're actually going to have to use the uh, super user um, uh, command because we're now in the root directory. Uh, so that's going to be sudo and then the, the command that they give. All right, so sudo, uh, and then the wget command and the address that they give there. That should be fine for getting the key. Uh, you note that we have now successfully saved the key, uh, and then we need to install it. Uh, 
Uh, so we're going to install it. Uh, we're also going to need to use the sudo uh, prefix, the super user command, uh, in order to actually install this key uh, on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So we type in sudo and then the uh, command that they give, apt key. And on both of these commands, they're exactly as shown, uh, and the only difference between what I'm doing and what they show on the Webmin site is that you do need to prefix uh, those two commands with the sudo, uh, the sudo super user uh, permissions uh, uh, flag. Uh, and that will install the uh, flag, and it'll say OK. Uh, now what we want to do is we need to uh, install uh, Webmin. Uh, before we do that, we need to update uh, the apt get repository. If you'll recall, we added the repository to sources.list. Uh, and now we need to go and grab all the information about that. Uh, so that's, um, uh, and again, we need to use sudo here, apt get update. Um, and that will um, grab all the information from the repositories. Uh, now, if it's been a while since you've done this, this is going to grab a lot of stuff besides just the, um, uh, just the repository that we added. Uh, so this could potentially take some time as it gets the uh, package lists. Then we're going to run the um, uh, uh, Webmin installation program. And now we're done. Uh, and now all we need to do is run the command to install Webmin. Uh, so again, we're going to use the sudo prefix, apt get install Webmin. And if you've done everything right, it's going to go out and grab the um, uh, information dependencies that it's going to need to install. Uh, do you want to continue? Just answer yes. Uh, this will go ahead and install Webmin. Uh, I'll pause the recording while it does that. It'll take a minute or two. Now we're done. That took several minutes. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is not uh, particularly fast, but it will get the job done. Uh, now that you've got it installed, you access Webmin through your web browser. Uh, and to access it, um, go to your browser uh, and enter the following. Uh, enter HTTPS. The S is important because this is a, a secure uh, kind of a connection uh, between your browser and the Raspberry Pi. And then colon slash slash. Uh, then the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Uh, mine happens to be that. Yours may, uh, yours may vary. There we go. Uh, and then a colon, and then 10,001, followed by four zeros. And be sure you get all the zeros there. It's easy to type in 1,000 instead of 10,000. Uh, but 10,000 will work, and 1,000 won't. Now, the first time you run this, depending on your browser, you may get the uh, notice that it's an untrusted connection. Uh, this is fine. It's, it's your own system, uh, so it's not a, a digitally signed um, site um, registered with one of the authorities, but that's okay. Uh, go ahead and click I understand the risks. Uh, add an exception, confirm the security exception. Now that process may vary uh, if you're using a different Explorer. I was using um, Firefox. Uh, it looks a little bit different if you're using Internet Explorer uh, or one of the other browsers, uh, but the, the process is the same. Uh, and then log in with uh, any, any user who has pseudo privileges, and of course on the Raspberry Pi, uh, the primary user is Pi uh, with the password Raspberry. Uh, and of course, if you've changed it, you'll have to enter the proper credentials. And this brings you to the Webmin interface. Uh, I'll click that off for now uh, and perhaps make this uh, browser a little bit uh, larger. Uh, so you can see that it's now reading uh, the information about our server, uh, the operating system, DB and Linux 7, uh, version of Webmin, uh, CPU usage, and so on. This gives you some general system information. Uh, and you can manage your uh, uh, manager webmin configuration here. Uh, of course, the system, uh, there are all kinds of administrative uh, tasks you can manage on the system. Uh, you have servers, so you can manage Apache. Uh, you can change configuration details on Apache. You can manage the MySQL database server, uh, including adding users, creating databases, creating tables, uh, editing tables, and so on. Uh, SSH server, this is all going to vary depending on what you actually have installed.
you can also uh, do some other things here, uh, networking, bandwidth monitoring. So this is a full-figured uh, configuration tool. If you'd like to know more about this, uh, just go back to the Webmin site. Um, there are uh, a number of tutorials, uh, documentation on the Webmin site that shows you how to do it. Uh, but this makes managing your Raspberry Pi uh, as, a, um, uh, as a server uh, a little bit easier than working strictly at the command line. So this is an option for you. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.